Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. In this video I wanted to share all of my tips, tricks and advice on how I stay organised as a mum to children with additional and complex medical needs. If you are new here, hi I'm Chrissy. I'm a mum of three and two of my three children have additional needs. My eldest son Zachary has autism and my daughter Avery has cerebral palsy. I would love it if you would hit the subscribe button and follow us along on our journey, creating an amazing life while adapting to additional and complex medical needs. Being a mum can be chaos and it can be really hard work. Being a mum to children with additional or complex needs is a completely different ballpark in my opinion. There are so many moving parts and different factors. There's different appointments, therapy sessions, medicines to remember, things to pick up, people to talk to, so on and so forth. Now obviously the things that work for me may not work for you. Our lives may be totally different. Avery here is tube fed which plays a big factor in how I like to do things throughout the day. First things first, I get as much done as I possibly can in the morning and when I say morning I mean before 8.30 a.m. That's the time I leave for the school run so I like to cram in as much as possible before then. Avery usually wakes up anywhere from half six to seven so I usually have somewhere between an hour and a half and two hours to cram as much stuff in as I can. Whether that be hanging the washing out, giving the kitchen a quick wipe down, putting myself together a little bit and by that I literally just mean washing my face, brushing my teeth and putting a bit of skincare on. I don't tend to wear makeup most days, but I feel like just popping a bit of skincare on and feeling a bit fresher helps keep me motivated through the day. There's a few reasons I do it this way. One being Avery tends to be much happier first thing in the morning, which means she doesn't need to be held as much. I also find that if I just crack straight on and start getting jobs done first thing, it helps wake me up a little bit. It sets the day off right for me. I always feel more productive just because I've been more productive and therefore I tend to be more productive throughout the day. When I get home from the school run at around nine o'clock, I feel a lot less pressure. Some of my to-do list is already done and then I feel like I've got a little bit more time throughout the day to spend with Avery, do some of her exercises and just play with her. To go alongside that, I also utilise Avery's feed time to get the stuff done that I need to get done. Avery can't really do much in terms of exercises and play when she's being fed just because she does have reflux and I don't want to set that off. I know her feed runs for about 20 to 30 minutes, which almost sets me a little bit of a challenge, which is my next tip, is to time yourself to do the things that you need to do. If you have a time to do something, you are much more likely to actually get it done in that time frame, as opposed to if you've got the whole day, you might procrastinate, if you have a set time, 20 to 30 minutes, say it's 20 minutes to give the house a quick speed clean or prep dinner for the evening, you are much more likely to use that time productively if you know that's the only time you've got. I 100% recommend that you use a calendar. Put it in a room that you spend a lot of time in and where the whole family can see it. In my case, it's in our kitchen. Keep the calendar up to date and that way everyone can see it, the whole family knows what's going on. My boys also have their own in their room and that's catered more towards their activities. To go alongside that, if you struggle to keep organised, then I definitely, definitely, definitely advise you to keep a physical personal planner. Just some kind of diary that you can keep all of your appointments in. This is my planner. This is from a brand called So Typical Me. I'll leave a link to them down below. Not affiliated with them in any way whatsoever. I just really think this planner is brilliant. It's completely customizable down to the binding color and the strap color. And obviously I've chosen a nice big picture of Avery to go on the front. But what I really love about it is the layout. Again, completely customizable. I chose to have my week down one side and I also chose to have this sort of mini to-do list in each day. And then on this side, I just have some note lines across the top. This comes in handy for if I need to jot anything down, if there's something that I've forgotten or need to remember. This is what I consider my weekly to-do list. This is my shopping list. So I generally use this if we've run out of something and I need to remind myself to buy it when I next do the food shopping. And this is my meal plan. So we've got Monday to Sunday and then I can plan my meals for the whole week. And then I just chose to have a full month calendar there. But like I said, this is completely customizable and there's many more options than what I've used here. These are just the things that I thought would be the most helpful in my day-to-day -day life. And then at the back, you also have some extra pages that you can choose to do what you want with. Again, they've got tons of different options. I just opted for plain lined paper again because I like to write notes and I like to write lists. And then I also chose to have a few to-do list pages because again, I like my to-do lists. But yeah, I really, really, really love this planner. I think it's brilliant. Like I said, I'll leave the link down below if you wanna check it out. 
The reason I'm recommending it is because this particular planner, because I've been able to customise it to my needs, has really, really helped me out this year. It's definitely been a game changer in keeping myself organised. I keep talking about my to-do list, which leads me on to my next tip. Write lists, write to-do lists. Each and every morning, just jot down all the little things that you want to get done that day, even if it's really small, even if it's you just want to clean your oven out that day, if you've got a phone call to make, if you want to cut your grass, just anything that you'd like to get done in that day, write it down. I find it really, really satisfying when I've got a list in front of me and I can tick off all of the things that I've done. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a big thing, but anything that I want to get done in that day, I write it down. In addition to that, if you realise you've forgotten to do something or you have an idea, write it down. I use this tip when it comes to my YouTube videos. If I get an idea and it's usually at the most inconvenient time, like at 10 o'clock at night and I'm trying to go to sleep. But if I get an idea, I will make sure I write it down in that moment because nine times out of 10, if I don't, I will forget it. Another thing I like to do to keep myself organised is plan ahead for the week. So I like to do a meal plan for the entire week and you saw my little meal planning section in my diary. I like to do my food shopping once a week so I know that it's all in for the entire week and I don't have to worry about that for another seven days. And again, I like to write to-do lists for the week. So if there's something I specifically wanna get done that week, I will write it down in my planner and that way I know that's something I need to get done before the week is up. Similarly to planning ahead, I also like to prep ahead. There's things that me and my husband like to do each evening just so that it's off of our minds and we don't have to do it the next day. So things like sorting out the boys' water bottles and fruit for the next day for school, getting the dishwasher on after dinner and then emptying it before we go to bed just so that we know we don't have to do that the next day. We like to fill up Avery's water bottles for the next day as well just so that that's all of her cool boiled water that she'll need for the following day. And I always like to keep Avery's baby bag stocked. So if you saw my day in the life video not long ago, you would have seen that I always keep an emergency kit for her feeding tube in there. But I also like to keep enough nappies in there, enough wipes, enough spare clothes. Apart from her feed, I like everything to be in there so that I can just grab and go if I need to. Another tip here that may not necessarily apply to you, but I wanted to include it because it's become a real time saver for me. Avery has a lot of different professionals involved in her care and obviously they all have different phone numbers. Some of them even have multiple phone numbers if they have like a main line and then a mobile. I like to keep all of their numbers obviously in my phone, but what I like to do is put Avery's name at the beginning of each of those contacts. That way they're all at the top of my phone book, just conveniently because Avery Avery's name begins with an A, so it would be at the top of my phone book, but then those numbers are all one after the other, so I'm not scouring through my phone book trying to find a number. And then just in case, because you never know with tech, things can go wrong, I like to keep a hard copy of all of those phone numbers in her medical folder. That way I have a backup just in case my battery dies and I need a phone number or something goes wrong with my phone, I have all of those hard copies in an emergency. I wanted to talk a little bit about how I make time for my YouTube videos, because my life is very busy, it is very hectic with all of Avery's different appointments and therapies. I knew if I wanted to start this, then I'd have to be really, really regimental and organized with the way I do it. I like to set flexible filming days for myself based around when I know I've got things going on that would be interesting to film. I say flexible because obviously things happen, Avery might not be in the best mood that day and I might need to rearrange my schedule a little bit. Like I said earlier, if I get an idea for a video, no matter what time of day it is, no matter when it is, I will always jot it down, whether that be pen and paper or on my phone. That way I know I don't forget it and even if it's just kind of an inkling of an idea and it's not quite a full-blown video idea yet, I will still write it down because I can always build on it later when I've got time. I take a little bit of time before each video to sort of jot down what I really want to say in the video, what I want to make sure I include, just so that I don't forget anything, because knowing me, I probably would if I didn't. I like to plan and film ahead. So I know I've got a busy lifestyle. I know that if I just filmed a video, tried to edit it and upload it in the same week, it just may not happen. Because like I said, Avery can get grumpy, she can get poorly, which means I would never be able to do it. So I like to film my videos in advance. If I can get it up quickly, that's great. If not, then I know I have other videos that I've pre-filmed so that I don't miss one of my uploads which at the moment as I'm just starting out I really do not want to do and then I also like to schedule my videos on YouTube just so that I don't have to worry about that and I don't have to rush to my laptop at five o'clock on a Wednesday evening hoping that my internet's working okay and the video will get uploaded by six because that won't necessarily happen if I schedule it everything's ready to go and I know exactly when it's gone live
I have two tips left and in my opinion these ones are probably the most important. The first one is be prepared not to be prepared. This is real life, unexpected things happen, emergencies happen, everything doesn't always go to plan. Which doesn't really sit very well with me because I'm a serial planner, I like things to go to plan, but especially since Avery's been born I've really had to adjust to the fact that unexpected scenarios will happen. I may have gotten into my pyjamas, ready to settle Avery down to bed, ready to go to bed myself, and then we've ended up having to take an unexpected trip to our local hospital because we're worried about something or something's happened with our feeding tube. Unexpected things happen so just make sure in the back of your mind that you know everything that you've planned always has to be that little bit flexible and my last tip and this is probably the one I'm most guilty for not following is don't burn yourself out allow yourself to skip things so when you're writing your to-do list decide what is a priority and then put things at the bottom that aren't necessarily a priority and also just put a line through something so for example I do not iron I think it takes too much time I will iron if we're traveling or we're going somewhere nice but other than that generally creases will fall out of clothes themselves it is really not that important also I try not to beat myself up too much if I haven't had time to clean the house that day I have a bit of OCD when it comes to cleanliness and keeping my house in a certain way and cleaning things in a certain way and having things organized in a certain way but especially in the last six months to a year I have had to force myself to not worry about it so much I've had to force myself to give myself a little bit of grace. I'm only human. I can't do everything. There are days when I literally do not sit down all day just because I'm trying to cram, cram, cram things in. And then I end up really, really, really tired and burnt out. And then I'm moody. And then I take it out on my family. And that's not fair. So 100% my number one tip is to just skip things. Take some time to relax. And I think that's just about everything. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the notification bell so that you're notified of all my future uploads. I post every week at 6pm UK time and with that said I'll see you all next Wednesday. Bye guys!